Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In today's tutorial, we will be developing an anomaly detection calculation. Why did I choose this topic for today's video? Well, it's really interesting. I was reading the blog post by Power BI team uh, recently, a few days ago, and one of the things that they were talking about was how they're adding anomaly detection feature to Power BI charts. So that got my creative juices going and I started thinking about it and I was thinking, well, it would be an awesome feature and I'm sure it'll be 10 times better than what we're developing here, but we will have no control over how that calculation works. So I was thinking about, okay, what if I were to develop this feature myself or something similar, could I do this just using DEX without having to run regressions or any kind of machine learning? Is it possible to do a pretty decent ano uh, anomaly detection using DEX? So I was thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and I think I have a solution. So if anomaly detection is a topic of interest to you, stick around. So first, let me make a case for why anomaly detection is important. Let's take a look at the trend chart here in monthly sales. So here in blue bars, I'm trending my uh, sales uh, by month. Uh, you could see month number is at the bottom of the chart. And what I'm trying to figure out is uh, which bar here is interesting which one should I be clicking on to find out what's going on that month. One of the things that I've been trying to challenge myself lately is to find a way to tell a good story with using as few uh, charts on my dashboard or report as possible. So very often I see a report that has 10 or more charts on it and there is uh, a lot of stuff going on and a lot of times users are confused as they need to really understand what's going on. So for a so for a power user who understands the data set, who understands how to use uh, Power BI, those 10 charts could be very valuable, but for somebody who is not quite that advanced, having 10 different charts that interact with each other could be a little bit confusing. So I've been pushing myself to find a way to do uh, as much as possible with a few, as few uh, charts as possible. And I think uh, the solution that I'm gonna describe here uh, could actually be very helpful. So what I'm gonna try to do here is, here I've put a pink bar over a bar, um, a rather pink icon, over a bar that I think is the most interesting. And what do I mean the most interesting? Well, I've tried to think about it this and that, and uh, try to slice it a bunch of uh, different ways in my head before I uh, come up with uh, this solution that I'm gonna present here. My approach here in this case, and there's probably some better solutions, but uh, the one we're gonna be talking about here is based on the ranking. So uh, let me explain to you how my approach works. So what I've done here, I've added a bunch of different charts and I will try to use those charts in conjunction with the top one to try to explain what I'm trying to do. So uh, at the bottom chart here, I've trended the same product sales, but what I've done is I've also added product in the, uh, in the legend of the chart. So you can see that I have five products, A, B, C, D, and E, and I have A at the very bottom and so forth. And you could kind of see what the distribution of the product is. So uh, which bar at the top would be more interesting to me? Well, if I have a product that's usually a top product, uh, that'll always be ranked, let's say number one. And if I have a product that's usually a bottom product, it'll be always ranked in my case, number five. Then uh, generally speaking, you know, you kind of have your uh, losers and winners and the distribution of top and bottom products kind of stays the same throughout the year with some exceptions. You might have uh, a promotion or you might have something else going on. So uh, the product rankings will change. But generally speaking, you kind of have your winners and losers. So my approach to um, the anomaly detection in this case is the following. I want to calculate the rankings for all of the products in all of the periods. And then what I want to do is I want to find a period on the chart where the rankings have changed the most. By the way, as this is a tutorial, as usual, I will upload this uh, model to my blog and the link will be provided in the description of this video. So if you're having a little bit of difficulty following what's going on, go ahead, download the model and you could play with the data and uh, you know it'll hopefully make a lot more sense when you're playing with it on your own. So let's take a look at period three. In period three, we see the distribution of um, sales look this way. What I've done here in the second chart at the bottom, I've ranked my products from a one to five 
uh, and we could see that the first product is E, D, B, C, A. So that's the distribution of ranking. If I click on period four, you will notice that that distribution did not change. So basically, even though I had more sales in period four than period three, the distribution was exactly the same. So uh, should I be worried about clicking on three and four? As far as I'm concerned, four was a repetition of three. It's not a very interesting month. Period six is much more interesting, and this is why I have the pink indicator at the top, because the change in rankings that occurred in period six relative to period five is the biggest. So if I click on period five, then it, so we see the distribution on chart three and also in product ranking, and then click on period six, then you will see that the products have shuffled quite a bit. And in fact, I will show you then it's the most, it has shuffled across all of the products. Therefore, something interesting occurred in period six, and that's the one you should be clicking on and investigating what actually took place and why the distribution of rankings has changed more than in any other months. So if I did not want to reduce number of uh, elements on my report, one of the things to make this more salient is to, instead of using a uh, stacked column chart, you can use a 100% um, stack column chart. So the problem with a stack column chart is a lot of times you really need to use it uh, with another chart that helps you see the trend. So my top chart will show me the trend and the bottom chart helps me with the distribution. So by using both of these things, I'm now able to spot that in my period six, yeah, there is actually the distribution of um, products looks uh, pretty much very much different from all the other periods. However, now I need to have more and more visuals on my report and that increases complexity, potential affects performance. Um, so we, we are trying to, to make it easier and tell as much of a story with one chart as possible. So uh, you might be having a hard time understanding exactly why six is so bad. Uh, this is a little bit of a randomized data set, so you're not gonna get really good trends here. This is gonna be a data set with a bit of a noise. Uh, however, once we take a look at the calculation, you can you should be able to see the logic and uh, trust that um, uh, insight a little bit more. So let's take a look at the model. It's very simple. We have our sales table uh, that tracks things by product and salesperson. We have a product dimension, date, and a salesperson dimension. So the model is very simple. Now let's run through all the calculations. So the first thing that you need to do, we're gonna be working with rankings. So we need to know what the sales value is. We also need to know what the prior month sales value is. I assume you have basic knowledge of DAX. I'm not gonna to get too much into this logic. Now that I have my sales data, I can calculate my rank. So the way, uh, the only thing I need to do is I wanna calculate for products, sales for rank for products, even uh, when they didn't have any sales. So I'm just adding a zero here to the sales uh, measure. So rank product will calculate the rank in the current period. And then rank product prior month will calculate uh, what the rank for this product was the month before. Now let's take a look at the more important variables. So one of the more important variables or measures that we're working with here is I'm calling it anomaly for product. The reason this measure is called anomaly product is because I'm using the change in ranking for products to figure out what my anomaly score is. So the logic is, is the following. First thing what I wanna do is, I don't wanna calculate anomaly for my very first data point, just because nothing happened before, so the, um, uh, the anomaly just hasn't occurred yet. So from, from that point, so we're gonna do all months other than the very first one in our data set. Now we're gonna be calculating our anomaly. How do we do this? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of the products that we can see at, at this time. We're gonna calculate for every product, we're gonna calculate what its rank is right now, what the rank was in the prior month. We're gonna deduct one from the other and take absolute value. And then we're gonna run a sum X to calculate all of those variance in rankings. So if my product's rankings stayed the same, the sum X will return a zero. So the more uh, variability I have in my products, this absolute value will give me that sum of, uh, of all of the deltas. So what I've done in this chart was for every period that we have in our data set, and our data set only has one year of data, I have uh, added the total anomaly by product for every period. So for example, you see that six has the highest anomaly uh, at eight, and then we have anomaly for period four and period eight 
as zero. What does that mean? That means that our rankings of product in period four was exactly the same as our ranking of product in period three. And our ranking of product in period eight was exactly the same as ranking of products in period seven. Okay, so because my data set is um, uh, randomized and kind of auto-generated, uh, you see that I have some uh, anomaly across all of the periods. In your, in your case, um, that distribution is going to be a little bit less crazy. You're going to have a lot less noise. You really are going to be able to see just a couple of months when the rankings are shifting. Because usually, again, you will have brands or products that are doing usually well and that are not doing so well. So usually the distribution of top and bottom products doesn't change very much period to period. So this would be a lot more meaningful for you. So you could uh, have given a customer two charts, this one with the trend and this one to trend the anomaly. So here I could say, okay, I could see the distribution of anomalies and period six is the one you should be clicking at because that's where things have changed the most. What I've chosen to do, uh, again, if you saw uh, earlier, is just to put a, a, a marker here in this chart to indicate that this bar here is the one that has the biggest uh, and the most, most interesting stuff going on. How to do that? Let's take a look at the calculation. You see the calculation is called anomaly product indicator. So let's click on that logic. And then the way this works is all we need to do is we calculate the anomaly for every period. And then we're gonna compare it with the anomaly with the maximum anomaly across all of the periods. So here I reformatted this calculation to make it easier for you to follow. So all we're doing is we're gonna return, uh, we're gonna do an if statement, and we're gonna calculate anomaly by product for the current period. Then we're gonna calculate uh, the maximum anomaly. So how do we do this? We're gonna take all of the periods, calculate the anomaly for those, and then use max x to figure out what the biggest one is. So if the current one is uh, the same as the biggest one, we're gonna return sales. And if it's not the biggest one, then we simply are gonna return blank so that this point will not get plotted. And now the only thing I have to do is figure out how to um, cosmetically display it the best. So what I've chosen to do was to use a um, line and clustered column chart. In my columns, I put my sales, and my line values, I put the anomaly product indicator. And then I did some uh, uh, creative uh, work on the plot area. I know you are gonna have a, sorry, it's gonna be in shapes. So if you download the file, you will see how I played with the marker shape and other things, and um, to make sure that um, this data point shows up right above the, the bar. So if you're trying to get this visual, uh, look and feel, uh, then go ahead and download the model and uh, follow all of the changes in the, all of the logic will be either in shapes. And I also had to uh, do something on the uh, secondary axis to make sure that the zeros are aligned so that this is positioned perfectly. In the model you will download from my blog, I will keep it this way before I had the right chart hidden behind the left chart, but I will leave it this way now that you can understand how things are uh, laid out and what the point is. And, um, you know, hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. That's about it for today. Let me know if you found my anomaly detection calculation useful. I think that it might be. And uh, you will have control over what anomaly means for you and the distribution of uh, dimensions that you actually care about. I'm looking forward to see how Microsoft will solve this problem. And uh, if you guys have any other idea, please uh, leave them in the comments below and I will take a look and see if I could do a follow up with uh, some other um, li uh, approaches to figure out the better way to do anomaly detection using uh, the technology that we all uh, already know, DAX. So as usual, thank you for stopping by. Please come back soon. Bye.